Hallelujah. Put those hands together for Jesus. His word is to be praised. If you have not done so this morning, welcome your neighbor to church. Say something wonderful about them. Hallelujah. Such a great honor to be at Lake Campus once again. I bring you greetings from Bagada where Jesus lives. And we share him to the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This coming Saturday is going to be awesome for all the women in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. Living your best life. Hallelujah. All the women, mothers, mothers to be. Hallelujah. Let's be around on Saturday. It's going to be it's all encompassing. So it's going to be um, spiritual. It's going to be at the same time how to take care of our house, how to take care of our family, how to dress, you know, amen, hallelujah, how to make sure that you are the constant temptation in the house. Praise the Lord. When a man's temptation is outside his home, our daughter is knocking. So how to be a constant temptation in your house is one of those things that we teach. Amen. Hallelujah. For the men in the house, they understand what we are saying. Hallelujah. And how to manage your finances. Hallelujah. So that the men will not be afraid of their wives when the salary increase comes. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to someone. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. It's good to be here. Let's open our Bibles quickly to the book of John, chapter 14. And this uh, month of July, we'll be looking into um, the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. This is the grandest of all mysteries in the kingdom. It is the most important of all, of all mysteries. It's the grandest of all secrets that a believer can undo that leads to other secrets for an enviable life. The person of the Holy Spirit is the grandest of all personality to understand. The person of the Spirit is the grandest of all secrets to understand. And in this month of July, we'll be looking into that and how to maximize our work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our life. And today we are looking into the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14 from verse 20, from verse 16 rather. John chapter 14 verse 16, scripture says, I will pray the Father, he will give another comforter that he might abide with you. Verse 17 quickly here. Verse 17, he said, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, but ye know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Father, we ask that the spirit in your word will leap up from the pages of the book into our spirit man, and we shall be the reality of the word you are about to hear today. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Hallelujah. So scripture says that I will send you another comforter. The word another comforter there in the Greek means alus. And another means alus. If you read the book of Genesis where Paul was talking about the Galatian church having received another gospel. The word another there means eterus. Which means another of different kind. But this alus here, another comforter means another of the same kind. Who will do or perform the same function. He said, so I will not leave you comfortless. I will not leave you an orphan. He said, I will send you Alos Paracletos. I will send you another of the same kind that does the same thing. Another, another. I will send you someone like me that does the function. That was Jesus speaking there. They're explaining the person of the Holy Spirit. The first question every believer asks is, who is the Holy Spirit? We walk into church. And pastor said, the spirit of the Lord is moving. The Holy Spirit is around. And you probably you are tapping your neighbor and asking, who is this Holy Spirit? He said, my dear, have you seen him? Amen. The husband is asking his wife, my dear, have you seen him? Did he walk past you? Amen. And, and, and you are looking for the Holy Spirit. And people often ask that question, who is the Holy Spirit? What is the function of the Holy Spirit? Who is this particular person? As a matter of fact, it has been said that the Holy Spirit, which is true, but it's half truth, that the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Trinity. Yes, it's true. But the third person in the Trinity does not make him the third in command. Is someone hearing me here? So the Holy Spirit is not the third in command. But I will explain to you, I've been asking that question myself. It's been a question in my heart. Until the Holy Spirit himself revealed unto me a, a particular scenario that explains better what, what the Holy Spirit is rather. So, uh, uh, just follow me. There is something we call H2O, which is water. 
It is the combination of two hydrogen and one oxygen. That's water. And this water can be presented in three forms. So, for example, if you walk into your house on a sunny Monday um, afternoon, coming from maybe hot sun, hallelujah, and you needed something very cold, but you got home and you took a cup and you poured juice inside the cup, then you go to the freezer and pick cubes and drop into the cup. And in a few minutes, I mean, the, 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 one, the, the, the greatness of God in the juice, hallelujah, will nourish your soul. Why? Because you took the, the cube. That cube in the solid form is H2O. That's water. It's all here in here. That's cube. But as at that time, you don't need it in the liquid form. You need it in what? The solid form. At the same time, if you are to go out almost immediately to meet a client, you will not go to the freezer to pick cubes, amen, or ask your shower to just rain cubes on you. My brother, if you're under the shower with cubes, my God, by the time you come out, it's on here in me here. You will have patterns of different things, hallelujah, different balls on your head. So what you need at that time is the same H2O, but in what? In liquid form. As a matter of fact, if all you had in the house was cube, what you will do is you will put those cubes, pour all of them in a kettle and do what? Plug it. Because at that time, you cannot use a cube. At the same time, if you're an engineer and you work in a very massive company, you will understand what we call a turbine. It's, 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 it's a large engine that can only be run by something called steam. When you eat the water so much, it turns into a gaseous form then you can use that particular gaseous form to run the engine so fast that it can produce electricity. But it's still the same H2O. Now the person of God, depending on the dispensation in which we need him, presented himself in three formats. Is someone hearing me here? So in the Old Testament, they could not relate with him as a person because seeing God means his death. No man in a fallen state can see God. So the only way God related with them was to have an intermediary who is a prophet or a priest. So a prophet will go to the mountain of Tabernacle to meet with God. And even, even in that format, God only showed up in a format of a smoke. So God was relating with them as God through a prophet. Then he came to a dispensation where I cannot be relating with one man. I need to relate with everybody. So he came in the person of Jesus. It's on here. That's the dispensation where Jesus appeared. Scripture says in the beginning was the word and the word was in God. And the word was God. Verse 14 says the word became flesh and lived among us. So God by the, by the ingenuity of his wisdom entered into the human flesh and presented himself as Jesus. But at the same time, Jesus could not be in Capernaum and be in Joppa at the same time. Jesus could not be in Bethlehem and at the same time be in Galilee. He had to be in one place at a time. But there needs a dispensation that was coming as at that time, which is now where God needed to be everywhere at the same time. He needed to be in you and to be in me. Kaposh katalabahaya. He needed to be in your house and be in my house. The best way to do that is to turn himself into the gaseous form. And by the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross, that was the entrance of the Holy Ghost. It's on here, here. So by that dispensation, the person of God turned himself to be available to the world in that format. So the only spirit, number one, is God. It's on here, here. The Holy Spirit is not the third person in command. The Holy Spirit is God. That is a revelation that when a believer undoes, no demon can oppress you anymore. Yes, that's a revelation. The Holy Spirit is God himself. So anytime you hear someone say, I feel the power of the Holy Ghost, that's the power of God. I feel the Holy Ghost, that's God. The Holy Ghost is not pim goose pimples. The Holy Ghost is not a dove. The Holy Ghost is not anointing oil. The Holy Ghost is not anointed water. The Holy Ghost is not influence. The Holy Ghost is God. It's on here. 
The Holy Ghost is not anointing oil. So people take anointing oil and they just drink it. No, that's not the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God. Scripture said, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And it dwells in you. God dwells in me. I'm a shrine walking. I am a shrine walking. A lively stone that carries the divinity of God. The Holy Ghost is God. You carry God on your inside. Yes, you carry God. Know ye not that your temple is the temple. So that's a revelation that a believer must come to understand that the Holy Ghost is God. Therefore, the Holy Ghost is a person. The Holy Ghost is not a heat. He said, that something told me. That's an insult to the person of the Holy Ghost. It's not something told you. It's he told you. Something told me to move. Not something told you to move. He told me to move. Something told me to go into the relationship. Not something. He said, he told me to go into it. The Holy Ghost is a person. Therefore, because he's a person, he has a personality. The Holy Ghost has personality. He has intellect. The Holy Ghost teaches. He's a great teacher. Is someone hearing me? John chapter 14, verse 26. He said, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance. The Holy Ghost teaches. First John chapter 2, verse 27. He said, you have received an anointing from the Holy One, an action from the Holy One, and you know all things, for he will teach you all things. So the Holy Spirit is a teacher. He teaches all things. When I say all things, I don't only mean the Bible. Number one, the Bible is the only book that you read and the author is with you. The Bible is the only book. It's the author of the Bible. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16, scripture says, all scriptures were written by the inspiration of God. Second Peter chapter one verse two, rather uh, Second Peter chapter one verse two, I guess. Scripture says only men were moved by the Spirit to write it. Only men were moved by the Spirit. Second Peter chapter one verse twenty-one. All scriptures were written. So the Bible is the only book that you no longer that you will after today that you read the Bible and it will be like a novel. No, it cannot be like a, that's the very life of God. My brother, do you know that for every comma there is a miracle? For every semicolon, there is something hidden. There are unwritten words in the written words. The Bible is not a novel. Because a novel, you can read the novel and the author, the author, back days, years down, the author died. But the Bible is the only book that when you read, the author is with you. As you are reading Ephesians, as you are reading, you can, you can really enter into that atmosphere and understand what the mind of God is. That's what the Bible is. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It teaches all things. It teaches medicine, teaches architecture, teaches engineering. It teaches all things. These are realities that believer carries that you know that no foolishness is permitted to be found in you. I am not permitted to be foolish. No utterance of foolishness can, can, can proceed out of my being. There is wisdom inside of me. One of the attributes of the Holy Spirit is called the wisdom of God. So every believer is loaded with the wisdom of God. There is the wisdom of this age, but there is a superior wisdom called the wisdom of God. Scripture says that it's an inspiration, that is a, that is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. That's what the Holy Spirit is. I tell myself over and over again. When I'm going into a meeting, I pray it over and over again. I resume on Tuesday, walk from Tuesday to Sunday. I say, when I'm going on Tuesday, one of the prayers that I pray is the Lord, no foolishness is found in me. No foolishness is found in me. I speak the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God finds expression easily. It finds expression. When I open my mouth, wisdom proceeds from my mouth. You will never hear my boss tell me that you're foolish. The wisdom is too much. I tell my wife sometimes, I say, you should thank your life that you married a wise boy. <laughs> because she will just come with issues, and you know, and you know, when, when your wife comes and you don't know the answer, you just lock up. And I will teach you how to do that. Sapoko Shanama. Sabrada Daba. I said, baby, just give me five minutes. I'm going to tell her, I have run into Makura Badaba. And by the time I'm back, 
I said, no, you can do it this way. You can do it. Then she will smile. I said, you, you better thank your star that this boy is wise here. But what makes me wise is the person of the Holy Spirit. The next time you're going for a board meeting, before you enter the board meeting, no foolishness is permitted to be found in me. Wisdom proceeds out of me easily. Yes, that's the person of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit teaches. The Holy Spirit testifies. Is the revealer of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is Jesus unlimited. Is someone hearing me here? What Jesus would have done on earth if it was physical, the Holy Spirit will do through you. That's what scripture says. Uh, the works that I do, you will do. Greater works than this you will do because I go to my father. And when he went to the father, listen, you see, I love the wisdom of Jesus. When Jesus was talking, most of the time, and I, I'll answer a lot of questions here. People read the Bible and they hear Paul said, the God of our, the God and the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Or Jesus himself talking, he said, I go to the Father. Or Jesus calling God. And people are wondering, are, are, they, are they two different things? How can Jesus be calling the Father? How can Jesus be calling God? He said, they said that he is God. They told us that Jesus is God. Let me explain. This is what it means. What Jesus was doing was to downgrade the revelation of his person to the understanding of a mortal man. You will not be able to understand if I tell you that I'm at home right now. Would you be able to take it? If my wife calls you right now and tell you that Pastor Wingo said he can't make it for second service at home right now, he's purging. Would you be able to take that? You can't because your understanding cannot fathom that a mortal man can be at home and can be here. The way Jesus could, uh, could relate with them because if Jesus had told them that this is God, then in their mind they would have forgotten that there is another God. So Jesus needed to cascade it down to their understanding to tell them that there is a God, there is a Jesus. Not knowing that the same person talking is God in himself. He cascaded the information. So even when Paul was writing it, Paul was writing it as though there is a God somewhere, there is a Jesus somewhere. No, he was talking about the same person. But he needed to cascade it down to their understanding to tell them that there is God. But he himself is the God on earth. So next time when you read it, you talk about God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was talking about himself. In the interpretation of the Bible, it calls, it calls it the bringing together of three realities in one statement. So you will see him say, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord. You will see him say, God and the father of our Lord. Those things are the same thing. But it's to understand, it's to, it's to give them an interpretation that they can relate with. You sound hear me? The best way you can teach a primary two student is to tell her that uh, two minus four is impossible. But when you get to secondary school, they say two minus four is minus two. But I was shocked when I got to university and I discovered that two minus four can be equal to dy dx over quotient x. <laughs> I was shocked to understand that two minus four can actually lead to is equal to minus x times apostrophe or minus two. I was shocked because as at that time, my understanding had been upgraded to understand that there cannot be impossibility in those things. When a man yield himself to the work of the spirit, you can now come to understand that there cannot be impossibility in the presentation of the Holy Ghost. He is God all by himself. Scripture said God walked out of God to present himself to man. How can a man sit on the throne? He walked out of himself to say I'm Jesus. And yet he's at home and yet he's with you. Oh, I serve a God that is at home and yet he's here. As he is here, he's in another church. As he is here, he's in, he's in your house. Yes, he's in your house. Yes. That's the sovereignty and the power of the Almighty. What makes him God if he's not God? <laughs> Someone hear me here. The Holy Spirit teaches. The Holy Spirit guides. Romans chapter 4, verse 4, chapter 8, verse 14. Scripture said, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So the Holy Spirit can lead a man. The Holy Spirit can lead you. He will lead you to prosperity. Lead you to the right conversation. Lead you to the right flight. Lead, lead you to the right seat. Hallelujah. The way God leads us sometimes is so, just so funny. You book a seat, and by the time you get to the airport, they tell you, sir, no, it has, your seat has been moved. Don't argue. Because all things work together for God. You don't argue. Hallelujah. It might just be that you need to meet someone there. You get to church and they sit down there. You don't know, I'm not going to sit down there. You know, your wife might just be the next person there. 
Say, sit down. So by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the, the usher guided you. Sister, sit down here. Because the brother is coming to say, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Spirit has a will. Is someone hearing me here? First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. Scripture says that he give every man gift according to his will. According to his proposed counsel. He has a will. He gives, he gives us, he gives us, he will also have a will and we can surrender our will to his will. But his will for our life is the best. Is someone hearing me here? He said, likewise, he helps our infirmity for we do not know how to pray for, but he helps us to pray according to the will of God. So the Holy Spirit has a will. What are the entrances to interacting with the Holy Spirit? Some of the things, some of the challenges that we have that are entrances to working with him. Number one is the intangibility of his presence. I love that one. In Africa, taking substance or Touching something is one of the hindrances to working in the supernatural. People love to hold substance. I remember a story, real life story. A woman went to an herbalist one day. Real life, yeah. Real life story. Went to an herbalist. My, my husband is a very, this man, very, very hot tempered. He talks anyhow, abuses me, and everything. He said everything about the husband. The man said, You know what? I will give you something. When the husband starts talking, just begin to chew it. Ah, the woman said, thank you, Baba, thank you. The Baba gave him, asked something, went home. One day the husband was ranting, how oh, can you do something like this? It's improper. It's a... She just said, um, she was doing it. All of a sudden she realized that the husband kept quiet. Ah, in her mind she was like, ah, this thing is working. My God, it's working. The following week something happened, the husband was throwing trash outside, and she began to chew the same thing. The husband kept quiet. She returned to the Baba and said, ah, what you gave me what? The Baba said, you are foolish. He said, Baba, what happened? He said, what I gave you was chewing gum. I realized that you are the problem to your husband's anger. If you can keep quiet, the man will keep quiet. I only gave you something to be busy with. Chewing the gum keeps you busy. And when your husband sees that you are not responding, then he comes down. Africans like what they can touch. Human beings like what they can touch. So one of the challenges of relating with him is the intangibility of his presence. Scripture calls it this way in the book of John chapter 3 from verse 7 to 8. He said the wind blows as he listed. He said so is everyone born of the spirit of God. Which means that, that the wind blows but you can't see it. And one of, the major reason why the Holy Ghost does not have a bodily form is so as to testify of the person of Christ. The primary assignment of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. If he ever had a form, you will take your eyes off Jesus, you will put your eyes on him. If the Bible ever says that the Holy Spirit is dove, dove will be the most expensive thing for believers to buy these days. People will go all the way to Dubai to get golden dove. You will not see them, they come back to the church and say, the dove I got is, is more expensive than yours. You know, you got your own Nigeria, I got my own Spain. Another person will come, I got my own Dubai, my own is golden. He said, oh, no, 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 I'm going to go for 18 karat. Hallelujah, 24 karat. Yeah, so, so, God, in his infinite wisdom, conserved the bodily form of the Holy Spirit so that he can reveal Christ to you. Because the main focus of our salvation is the man that hung on the tree. So, the intangibility of his presence can be an interest. But one of the ways to magnify his intangibility is to recognize his presence. While you are seated, you can recognize him. Yes, you can. You, are, you can constantly engage him. That's number two. You recognize his person. Though you cannot see him in the physical eye, but you recognize that he's available there. Hallelujah. Everybody today will recognize the fact that there is oxygen here. Because if you decide not to recognize it, my brother, you are gone. Is someone hearing me here? Then constant engagement... Then the third one is constant presentation. The way you relate with your wife is an int. The way you relate with the Holy Ghost. Is someone hearing me here? That is why when a man has a good relationship with the Holy Ghost, he will be a loving man. My sister said yes, sir. She got the revelation before everybody. Is someone hearing me here? When you see a man that understands the dynamics of relating with the Holy Spirit, that man is a perfect man. 
Because there is a way to relate with the Holy Spirit that is equal. That's why it's the book of Ephesians chapter 5. I didn't have time, I will explain that. Because the way you relate with the Holy Spirit is a template for relating with your wife. It is what? Recognition. Ladies like recognition. Oh, you look so good. That can bail you out of trouble for one week. Constant engagement. Constant engagement and constant presentation. When you go to the office, have you seen my wife? That can bail you out for one month. <laughs> Hallelujah. Constant presentation. Let me quickly run. I don't have time. Hallelujah. The second one, an entrance. My God, my time is gone. Is business. Business is a stratomy or a strategy that keeps the believers moving but not in motion. Moving and being in motion and progressing are three different things. A man can be moving. This is moving. Everything is moving. Sorry. Motion is there is a direction. Progress is there is a purpose purposeful direction. You don't hear me here. A man can be moving and not be in motion. So it's too much of activity that does not lead to accomplishment. People are too busy trying to make the relationship work when you can ask the Holy Ghost. Jumping from one friend to the other. How did you relate? Do you know? Ladies, I'm very sorry our women, our mothers, I'm very sorry I'm using it because you are just very equal to the Holy Ghost. Truthfully, when we read the scriptures, they are very equal to the Holy Ghost. But so I'm so, you don't think that I'm, I'm just speaking on you. But, but the way you relate with my wife is different from the way we relate to her. The templates are different. You saw hearing me? The templates are different. So going to someone, how do you relate to her? I say, my wife, if you slap her once, everything gathers together. My God, if you try it in your house, you are done. Someone hearing me? So there is a template. That it is in relating with the Holy Ghost that you get that template. Is on here, here. So the devil cannot keep people busy doing activities as though activities is equal to accomplishment. So a man can be moving but not be in motion. A man can be working nine to five. He said it is an abomination for a man to wake up early in the morning and eat the bread of sorrow. That's the Bible. Wake up early in the morning. He said, under the sun, I have seen an abomination. He said, I have seen kings walking and I've seen priests riding on horses. It's an abomination. It's an abomination to walk up in the morning and later return to eat the bread of sorrow. Which means when he woke up in the morning, he was involved with activities. He was walking from morning to night. From morning to night, he was walking. From morning to night, by the time he returned at night, he was eating the bread of sorrow. So much of activity, but no result. Sometimes the devil keeps us busy. Working on what will not bring results. Arguing in the family. Arguing, trying everybody, trying to make a statement. You have to listen to me. You have to, you have to listen to me. People try. All, all manners of gimmicks. All manners of laws. 13 laws of breakthrough. 55 laws of, of seduction. 13 laws. Things are running everywhere. Meanwhile, you can just sit down with him. And can tell you, my son, take left. There is one answer that answers every other thing. That is the answer you need. Psalm chapter 46 verse 10. Scripture says, be still and know that I'm God. Psalm chapter 23. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in his green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. The miracle of Adam came when he was sleeping. God said, it is not good for Adam to be alone. After that time, he gave him activity. He was naming birds and gorillas. He came to a time, listen, I need to put you to sleep. So when the man was still, something came out of him. When he woke up, he saw the produce. Too much of activity sometimes can lead to paralysis. Can we just go and find time and sit down with the Spirit of God? What would you have me do in this business? This partnership I'm about to go into what are you saying concerning this partnership? Would this partnership take me to the next level in my business or should I stop it now? Too much of activities. And the next one is sin consciousness that hinders the work of people with the Holy Ghost. Sin consciousness, which is the unaided, unguided, constant reminder of your inadequacies. 
I am not good enough. God is angry at me. Such things can hinder your work with God. But you need to believe, you need to walk in the reality of what Christ did on the cross. Scripture says that we are justified by faith. We live and we move by faith. We are justified by the redemption of his blood. That is who we are. We are not Christians because it's a religion. We are Christians because we have received the life of God by faith. By faith. Amen. What has passed has passed. Everything has been washed by his precious blood. That I'm justified by faith. Quickly let me run you through how to walk. Maximize our work with the Lord. The first one quickly here is generate interest in the person of the Holy Spirit. Generate genuine interest in the person of the Holy Spirit. James chapter 4 verse 8, scripture says, draw near to God and I will draw near to you. When you draw near to God, I will draw near to you. One of the ways to generate interest is what we call asking questions. Moses got to an encounter one day on Mount Sinai. And the bush was burning, but it was not consumed. My generation would have looked at the bush and said, I mean, you probably given a scientific calculation of why the bush was burning and it was not consumed, or probably just walked past. But Moses said, I will go and ask, why? Why is this bush burning and not consumed? How to generate interest is to ask why. It's to be inquisitive. To the Lord what is happening in church? Can it happen in my life? People have said that testimonies happen by believing in you. Can I receive my own? Genuine interest in the person of God. Genuine interest. They've said that this word can change the life of a man. Yes, truly it has changed my life. I wish I could tell you that it's just a novel. Yes, I, I wish I could tell you it's a compilation of stories. That men just sat down one day and in their brilliance, they, they decided to put together some things that would make sense. I, I wish I could tell you that. But this very thing is the very life of God presented to a man on planet Earth. He said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirits that gives life. Every comma, every full stop, every semicolon in this book is a life unto them that find it. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 20. It's a life unto them that find it. So we must generate genuine interest. Which is the person of the Holy Ghost? My wife got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I haven't heard this kind of words. Went back to home, went back to her house and said, Lord, I must receive this baptism of the Holy Spirit. She locked up herself in the, in the toilet and prayed and prayed on she, until she busted out in tongues. They were looking for her for five hours. She was somewhere. Totally gone in the Holy Ghost. Is someone hearing me here? Genuine interest in this person. The second one is exposures to spirituals. Exposures. Exposures to meetings. Exposures to tea groups, cell meetings that carries the very intimacy of God. The very reality of God. There are men that you meet that you never be, same, be the same again. It's on here. There are vessels of God that you meet that you will never, literally never be the same again. One day, Mary needed to understand that it is not only a virgin that can give birth, but even a 70 and a 90 year old woman can give birth. Sometimes it's just the testimony of someone that pushes you to know God the more. So God needed to, to, to increase her horizon. So God said, go to the house of Elizabeth. And immediately she entered into the house of Elizabeth. In the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 40, scripture says that she busted out, prophesying. So how come the mother of my Lord Jesus had come to me? And she didn't know that Elizabeth was pregnant. But by, by, by association, by exposures, I tell people I am the atmosphere of Jesus. Anyone that comes in contact with me comes in contact with him. That is who a believer is. I'm the atmosphere of Jesus. The atmosphere of Jesus. The atmosphere of Jesus. There's an atmosphere. Where everything is possible, no disease incurable, there's an atmosphere. The atmosphere is that when you enter into, you know that God is here. There are homes that when you, just like there are homes that you enter into, you know that there are demonic manifestations there. At the same time, there are homes that you enter into, there are angelic activities on a doorstop. Yes, there are homes like that. Let your home be that home. Let your wife be that wife. Let your children be that children. 
I proposed in my heart that as they grow up, they will understand the person of Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost. He said, Daddy, I am having a headache. I would like, lay your hands on yourself. Yes, those are the kids that will train. Because they will go to school one day and then a generation will tell them that there's no God. But I desire to have a child that when he gets, when they tell them there is no God, he can tell them there is God by laying hands. I told my colleagues on campus, he said there's a difference between you and I. One of the ways to settle this argument, you bring a blind man, I bring a blind man. Whoever opens the blind man, that's the end of discussion. I had a roommate one day, someone was, someone was, what, someone was demonized, very tall guy, shouting around the house. I said, now I will show you the real power of God. This is not fake. This is not, uh, it's because you go to church, you're a church, but listen, this is the power of God. The guy was very huge and tall guy, destroying everything. Of course, we had heard story about him before I moved into the house, that that's how he destroyed things when the demon comes upon him. But here comes the everlasting carrier. When we got there, now this is for the glory of God. I'm telling you what is available to you. I said, bring me a pocket of water. Just bucket. Dip my hands into it. Speak in tongues for three minutes. I said, pour it on him. I stood with him. We told him he was beating everybody. I stood there. Pour it on him. So they poured it on him. The guy ran into his room. Stayed there for 30 minutes. He came out. I said, pastor, thank you. I said, no, I'm not a pastor. I'm just a Christian. He said, what happened? He said, when the water came upon me, he said, I saw beans coming out of me. He said, that is what it means to carry the presence. Yes, that is what it means. The next time something happens in your family, you will lay hands on your wife and your kids. Receive the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. We are going to pray shortly. Exposures to spiritual meetings. Exposure to right associations. Exposures. And the last one today is maintaining a vibrant prayer life. Maintaining a vibrant prayer life. To relate to the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost came when the people prayed. Acts chapter 1, verse 14. Acts chapter 1, verse 20, verse 16. And Acts chapter 2, from verse 1. They were praying in one accord, making prayers and supplication. And the Holy Ghost came. And the way we sustain that fire is to continually pray. Acts chapter 10, scripture says, as they continually pray, the Holy Ghost came. They continually pray. A vibrant prayer life. Is one of the strategies to relating with the Holy Spirit. To keep the devil at bay. To keep your life on fire. Is someone hearing me? Prayer fire fall upon me. Let our homes be the home, the inhabitant of the pe very person of Jesus. Yes, let my life be the carrier of his grace. That's my desire. Lord, I long to see you in my days. That I may tell my children that you exist. That truly you live. I will not want them to grow one day to think Jesus was a fiction. He's a man that walked on planet Earth. He's a man that lives within me. Shall we just pray in the Holy Ghost this morning? Shekra Pela Matosia. I want to give you two more minutes to pray in the Holy Ghost. Zielena no shigana. Akostele menadishta. Shanadela mano si branina sinodana. Your prayer today is, Lord, let there be a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost. Let me come to that realization that truly you live within me. Lord, set my family on fire. Set my prayer life on fire. Set my study life on fire. Let me have encounters upon encounters to, strong, to strengthen my convictions in you. Pray in the Holy Ghost fervently. Zabrata da shagala brado koska talamande. Zebra da gashka telebrano zina manto baragatahai. Zebra da goshke da balabataya. Lord, as everyone that are hungry in the house today, we ask for a fresh, fresh baptism of fire upon their prayer life. Zata negani go da katuna gashkata. Lord, give me convictions upon convictions, encounters upon encounters to come to understand, to come to know the very realities of your being in the name of the Lord Jesus. That my work will not be futile, my work will not be vain, my work will not be fiction, but my work will be experiential, my work will be knowing you, that I may know you, Father. Exige your Malamonde and Brokoshki Dabatai. 